<clears throat> All right. Good evening. Okay, so last lesson, uh, we stop with uh, make sure with me a minute. Okay, I uh, will stop with um. We will writing skill, right? Yes. All right, and so today we will continue with writings, okay? Okay. All right, now today we study about the writing. Now part three. So this is a topic fitness. So what do you do to keep fit and stay healthy? Um, I always ride a bike for 20 minutes a day and play badminton with my younger brother whenever I have free time. Okay, so you do sport, right? Play sport, sure. Yes. Play sport and do exercise. Yes. All right, so you must follow these golden rules to stay fit and healthy, okay? Okay. Eat healthy, keep your body hydrated, make exercise a part of life, stop smoking, okay. practice deep, deep breathing, okay. uh, keep a uh, close eyes on your weight, drink in okay. moderation, Enjoy okay. regular breaks and holidays. Right? This is the golden rules. Okay. All right. So this part is a letter you received from your pen friend. So now you write a letter to your pen friend and your letter is about 100 words, okay? Okay. The topic is, in your next letter, could you give me some advice and tell me how to keep fit and healthy, okay? Okay, okay. Now we have 10 minutes to write. Okay.
okay. All right, send me later, okay? Okay. All right, this is a sample answer with the mark five. Okay. Okay. Okay, we have daily or daily. Do big difference equal make a big differences, okay? Okay. All right, question eight. So you only teach one, you write a story. It's must have a title, an excited adventure. Then write about 100 words, okay? Okay. Write the topic, an exciting adventure. Right, this is a sample answer.
Uh, teacher, can I ask a question? Right. Uh, I must write a story about myself or I can write about anyone else. You understand this topic? The title? Mm, yes. Adventure. Yes. You know it? Yes. All right. So I think uh, you should write about yourself. Okay. It's good. Okay. Because, um, okay. because uh, when you write about yourself, you will share a lot of uh, experience, a lot of things that you will discover or you will abandon. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Now we turn to this listening skill. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we study about the listening two dash three. All right, part one, okay? So you hear the recording about the picture, okay? Thank you. All right, we have the new words for part one. Lightning, this one. Lightning. Did you? Okay. OK, 
calculator. Calculator. Boost. Boost. This is flat shoes. Flat shoes. And high heels. High heels. Okay, high heels. This one. Do you know flip flop? Yes. Flip flop. Yes. What does it mean? Okay, set this on the area. Yes, the play. Wait, read out it. Okay. All right. Now, read it. Okay, listen. Okay. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One. Where is the station? Excuse me, can you tell us the way to the station? Take the second on the right, and it's at the end of that road. Now listen again. Excuse me, can you tell us the way to the station? Take the second on the right, and it's at the end of that road. Two. Where did the woman put the calculator? Have you used my calculator? Yes. Can't you find it? I put it back on the desk. Where? Next to the lamp, I think. No, wait a minute. It's on that pile of books. Now listen again. Have you used my calculator? Yes. Can't you find it? I put it back on the desk. Where? Next to the lamp, I think. No, wait a minute. It's on that pile of books. Three. Where is Helen? Is Helen here? Yes, she's over there, next to the man in the shorts. Who's that with her? Her brother, I think. Now listen again. Is Helen here? Yes, she's over there, next to the man in the shorts. Who's that with her? Her brother, I think. Four. Which building was hit by lightning? Did you hear the storm last night? Of course. It was right over our apartment and seemed to hit something near the hotel. Yes, the factory near the church was hit by lightning. It's lucky no one was at work. Now listen again. Did you hear the storm last night? Of course. It was right over our apartment and seemed to hit something near the hotel. Yes, the factory near the church was hit by lightning. It's lucky no one was at work. Five. 
What does the woman want to buy? Now I've bought this skirt, I think I need some new shoes to go with it. Can't you wear your boots? No, they're too old. I think it would look better with flat shoes. Come on then, let's try that shop over the road. Now listen again. Now I've bought this skirt, I think I need some new shoes to go with it. Can't you wear your boots? No, they're too old. I think it would look better with flat shoes. Come on then, let's try that shop over the road. Six. Which picture does the woman decide to send? My mother wants me to send her a photo of our new house. Which one shall I send? Uh, this one is nice, with the children playing in the back garden. I prefer this one, with you standing by the front door. I'll send her that one then. Now listen again. My mother wants me to send her a photo of our new house. Which one shall I send? Uh, this one is nice, with the children playing in the back garden. I prefer this one, with you standing by the front door. I'll send her that one then. Seven. Which hotel has the man chosen? Have you decided which hotel you're going to stay in? Oh, yes. It's the largest in the area. It's got four floors and it's right on the seashore. And there's an outdoor pool as well. So we'll be able to swim every day. Now listen again. Have you decided which hotel you're going to stay in? Oh, yes. It's the largest in the area. It's got four floors and it's right on the seashore. And there's an outdoor pool as well. So we'll be able to swim every day. That is the end of part one. All right, that is the end of part one. One, where is the station? B. Wait, where did the woman put the calculator? C. C? Yes. Right, where is Helen? B. A. Okay. Which building? was hit by lightning b right what does the woman want boy c right which picture does the woman decide to send a right which hotel has the man chosen c all right good and question no. Right. Read the description. Sorry, out of script. Okay. Right, next one. Okay. All right, so part two, you hear a radio interview with a man who's worked in an international camp, okay? I choose the A, B, or C, okay? 
Okay. Now turn to part two. Questions 8 to 13. You will hear a radio interview with a man who works on an international camp. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hi there. On last week's programme, we interviewed the man behind the idea of the international camps. So I thought that this week you'd be interested to hear more about one of the camps which will be held later this year. Over to you, Michael. Thank you. Yes, the camp is open to everyone between the ages of 18 to 23. You don't have to be a student. You don't even have to be employed. But you must be able to speak one foreign language in addition to your mother tongue. OK. And what about accommodation? Well, the international camp organisers supply tents which sleep up to four people. But you are unlikely to know the people who you'll be sharing a tent with. The nationalities are mixed, so you'll be sharing with people who may not even speak your language. Sounds interesting. Who does the cooking at the camp? Everybody is expected to help with the running of the camp. That means helping to prepare food, keeping the campsite clean and tidy and so on. The camp organisers are looking for people who can get along with others, whatever happens. And is there anything you need to take? Well, as I've said, tents are provided, but you'll need to bring your own pillow, knife, fork and spoon. If you get chosen, you're also asked to bring along photographs, uh, postcards, anything that shows some of the traditions and customs of your own country. Everything goes into an exhibition at the start of the camp, together with a huge map of the world showing the different countries people come from. And is there any entertainment? Yes, there is. Everyone helps to provide the camp entertainment. You are expected to sing, dance or play something musical. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are. <laughs> There is a space on the form to write down what you can do. Sounds great fun. And what does it all cost? Well, you have to find your own way to the camp, so it's up to you whether you fly, cycle, walk, hitchhike or whatever. <laughs> the charge for a week's camp is $300, but you'll have to change that into your own currency to get a better idea of the cost. You have to pay the full cost before you arrive, but you can pay in any currency you want. Or you can use a credit card if you have one. Right, now for the phone number to ring. It's 0124... Now listen again. Hi there. On last week's programme, we interviewed the man behind the idea of the international camps. So I thought that this week you'd be interested to hear more about one of the camps which will be held later this year. Over to you, Michael. Thank you. Yes, the camp is open to everyone between the ages of 18 to 23. You don't have to be a student. You don't even have to be employed. But you must be able to speak one foreign language in addition to your mother tongue. OK. And what about accommodation? Well, the international camp organisers supply tents which sleep up to four people. But you are unlikely to know the people who you'll be sharing a tent with. The nationalities are mixed, so you'll be sharing with people who may not even speak your language. Sounds interesting. Who does the cooking at the camp? Everybody is expected to help with the running of the camp. That means helping to prepare food, keeping the campsite clean and tidy and so on. The camp organisers are looking for people who can get along with others, whatever happens. 
And is there anything you need to take? Well, as I've said, tents are provided, but you'll need to bring your own pillow, knife, fork and spoon. If you get chosen, you're also asked to bring along photographs, uh, postcards, anything that shows some of the traditions and customs of your own country. Everything goes into an exhibition at the start of the camp, together with a huge map of the world showing the different countries people come from. And is there any entertainment? Yes, there is. Everyone helps to provide the camp entertainment. You are expected to sing, dance or play something musical. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are. There is a space on the form to write down what you can do. Sounds great fun. And what does it all cost? Well, you have to find your own way to the camp, so it's up to you whether you fly, cycle, walk, hitchhike or whatever. <laughs> the charge for a week's camp is $300 but you'll have to change that into your own currency to get a better idea of the cost. You have to pay the full cost before you arrive, but you can pay in any currency you want, or you can use a credit card if you have one. Right, now for the phone number to ring. It's 01... That is the end of part two. All right, this is the end. Number eight, if you want to apply for the camp, you must... Please speak more than one language. Right. In a camp tent, you can expect to... A, mix with other nationalities. Right. The camp wants people who are... B. C, able to mix well. Okay. Ừ. Chúng ta nhìn vào đây chúng ta không cần nghe thì chỉ cần nhìn vào đây thì nó đoán được Cái trại hè này người ta muốn một người nhìn tham gia phải làm sao Able to make well Có khả năng hòa nhập tốt Chứ không cần good organize Không cần người tổ chức tốt Không cần good at cooking okay. What do you have to take to the camp? Uh, see. Yes, a picture. As a camp member, you should be joined in performances. Yeah, joined in performances. The camp fees must be paid before the camp starts. Right. Everything must be paid before the camp starts. Right. Yes. This is the our script. Okay. All right, we have mother tongue. In addition to supply or equal provide. Okay. All right, part three. You will hear a young man who has applied 
for an office job talking about her jobs abroad. So let's fill the missing information in the numbered space, okay? Now turn to part three, questions 14 to 19. You will hear a young woman who has applied for an office job talking about her jobs abroad. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part three. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hello, Miss Brownlow. Come and sit down. Now, I'd like you to tell me more about the two years you spent abroad after leaving school. Oh, right. Well, um, I decided to go abroad to see the world. I only intended staying for six months, but in the end, I stayed two years. First of all, I worked for a family. I looked after their three children, all under the age of ten, so I was kept very busy. I really liked the family, but after six months I was ready for a change, although I didn't want to come home. Then I applied for a job in a hotel as a receptionist. That way I could still practice my languages. And it was really good because I had my own room in the hotel and I had all my meals there as well. And then the hotel closed down. But the manager offered me a job in, in a bakery. It belonged to his brother and I worked there for almost a year. At the beginning it was really hard because I had to get up so early in the morning, around four o'clock every day. But once I got used to that, it was great, because I'd finished work by two o'clock in the afternoon, and the rest of the time was my own. But my parents thought I ought to come home and get a proper job. I suppose they were right. So that's when I applied for the job with the Bank International in their foreign department, and so I continued to use my languages. You've had quite a lot of experience, haven't you? Now, if I could ask you... Now listen again. Hello, Miss Brownlow. Come and sit down. Now, I'd like you to tell me more about the two years you spent abroad after leaving school. Oh, right. Well, um, I decided to go abroad to see the world. I only intended staying for six months, but in the end, I stayed two years. First of all, I worked for a family. I looked after their three children all under the age of 10, so I was kept very busy. I really liked the family, but after six months I was ready for a change, although I didn't want to come home. Then I applied for a job in a hotel as a receptionist. That way I could still practice my languages. And it was really good because I had my own room in the hotel and I had all my meals there as well. And then the hotel closed down. But the manager offered me a job in, in a bakery. It belonged to his brother, and I worked there for almost a year. At the beginning, it was really hard because I had to get up so early in the morning, around four o'clock every day. But once I got used to that, it was great, because I'd finished work by two o'clock in the afternoon, and the rest of the time was my own. But my parents thought I ought to come home and get a proper job. I suppose they were right. So that's when I applied for the job with the Bank International in their foreign department, and so I continued to use my languages. You've had quite a lot of experience, haven't you? Now, if I could ask you... That is the end of part three. Right, that is the end. <laughs>
Now the first job worked for? For a family. Yes, a family. The length of time stayed? Six months. Six months, right? Yes. So the second job worked as? A receptionist. Yes, a receptionist. The third job work for a bakery. Yes, bakery or bakers. Got up at four o'clock. Yes, four o'clock or four a.m. in the morning. So, were the bank international worked in a foreign department? Great, foreign department. So that's the audio script. Okay. Any question? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I think we'll stop here today, okay? Okay. Any question for today? No. All right. So we don't have any question. Stop here, okay? Okay. Send me your writing, okay? Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye, teacher.